Hello friends, this is Ots, and today we have another set of games sent to us by our viewers. These are relatively newer players that still have a lot to learn and wanted some critique and advice on how they can do better. We're going to be watching their gameplay and analyzing it play by play, and there's a lot to learn here for most killer players, and honestly, even if you don't play killer, it's super entertaining stuff. We have a Nemesis player with only 100 hours that played insanely well and was really good with their tentacle, but they kept using it at the wrong time, and that made the game much harder. We also had an Oni player that made a terrible mistake less than 10 seconds into the game. They broke a breakable wall that you should always ignore, and because of this, you will see the match was a lot tougher as well. And then we have a knight that started the game playing in a very impressive way, incredibly accurate, incredibly surgical, but then things started to go tough, and in the end game, it looked like they might walk home with nothing at all. But that's until they made one of the most insane plays, one of the craziest recoveries that I've seen a player of this level make. Very, very cool stuff. We're going to start with the night game. You're going to love it. We are watching a console player, presumably. I mean, it could be PC, right? With, with, um, with a controller. But we're playing someone on controller, playing the night. And I actually quite like this build. We have the map of the realm, which makes the guards find survivors more consistently you might you might as well never take this out and off and then the the standard the the banner um this one makes your a makes your path block windows and also it's like a mini blood warden at the end of the game uh the perks don't have a lot of crazy synergy but they're pretty good pain res great regression perk devour hope if they don't get rid of it massive threat lethal to see people at the start super nice and it goes well with nowhere to hide so that you can kick a gen and see people keep in mind that if you kick gens with your guards, they don't apply nowhere to hide, so, you know. Oh, wow, we have Lethal Pursuer. Chad, do you notice anything? I, I think we didn't see... I think we didn't see two survivors. One of them was a Jeff, right? So it makes perfect sense they might have distortion. No, it was a David, actually. Yeah, there's two distortions, it looks like. And if we had a slightly better definition, I would be able to tell who the survivor is just based on the outfit. But, yeah, it's good to know that maybe we should go now for the non-distortion people. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, awesome. Great, great job getting that first hit. I I am 100% in favor of chasing this guy. When you have pain resonance, you want your first chase to be as quick as possible. You don't always want to split pressure or whatever. That's stupid. Get your first down quickly. And by the way, the first down, the first pallet that he drops, you could use uh, your path. Oh, that was a misplay. That was a misplay. Ooh, window blocked. Because he used it three times. Uh, go from the right, so he doesn't beat you to Shaq. Oh, that's good. You get it down here. 100%. Watch out. That could have been a fake. I think that's what he was going for. Okay, I like this idea. Nice. Grim Delegation Order. That means that... Uh, that means that he sent the gen kick. That's good. I love that. Excellent job. Yeah, and then right there. Wait, wait, wait. Go from the right side and sandwich her. Let's go. Let's go. Ugh. Okay. Now we have a little problem. It's very likely that the other guy's gonna get picked up, which is a bit of a shame. But that's okay. I mean, with so many survivors available, I, I I'm not even sure if going for the other guy was a good idea. It might have been resulting in the same. It might have resulted in the same thing. Go for the other guy. Get the pickup. He was next to the window. Perfect. Ah, he got picked up. No problem. Uh. Oof. I like that. I like that idea. Uh, this is fine as well. Remember, guys, we have hook um, Sable number four. And maybe we're going for number three now. Uh, sable number four took a hit from the guard. Good to know. Might have off the record. Oh, perfect. Can you use power? Use power. Uh, you could have used it. I know it's a bit difficult. Uh, cause, but if you if you did it at that point. Oh, right. Uh, you're, you're thinking about it. Lucky. You get this, though. You get this. There's a pallet there, but I'm not sure she reaches it. If you do this right, she doesn't. Mmm, good stuff. It would now be a really good time to get the pain dress, maybe, and kick that gen with a guard or something. The one right next to you. You want to get rid of it. Don't forget about the gens you left. The, the pallets. Yeah, excellent. I mean, this is fine, too. Um, uh, Chad, what would you say so far? If I was watching a streamer with 5,000 hours playing like this, I wouldn't even bat an eye. So far, really good gameplay. 
The build's good. The decision making's nice. Survivors, I have to say, have made some weird plays, but then they've recovered fine. Um, yeah, we'll see. Really, really good so far. Uh, Kit Jess, thanks so much for the 39. All right. Should you ever kick a gem that's at like 1% like this? Generally speaking, no. With nowhere to hide, eh, it's a bit more appealing. That being said, we know... Uh, let, let, let's pay attention to something. Um, we Let's go back a bit further. I know this might seem trivial, right? But it really isn't. At the start of the game, where was the totem? This totem, it's hard to see, but it's right here. This totem was cleansed a f like a minute ago, right? Right around this time, you, we heard the totem be cleansed. Look at... Um, you don't see it because uh, the Vower doesn't light up, but... But the, the thing is, someone has been on that totem. So we know that survivors are around this area somewhere. So even though... Oh, oh wait, yeah. Wait, are we too far? No. So even though I don't know for sure, I have a feeling this kick is not going to reveal anyone. And maybe I would go elsewhere, but we'll see. And I would be... I think kind of right. Yeah. Would have been better maybe to find one gen that they're doing. If they did a totem there, there's no reason they're not doing that. This is a bit of a shot in the dark, by the way. Oh, you started chase. Uh, don't go back to Shaq. There's nothing there for you. Kick him. Very good. Get your power back sooner. See, they were doing the gen next to the hex. You could have come here and kicked that instead. Shame. Uh, this is a bit difficult, but I, I think I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to cover the exits so that he can kind of like, you know, two tag it. I really like this idea. And you might reveal someone here, so that's good. Excellent job. Wow, what a perk, huh? I need an injured girl. Watch out for a dead heart. But I mean, this doesn't strike me as a dead heart type. That's a pain risk. Uh, there was an easier way to get down, but that's cool. Very nice. Uh, Chad, is this a pain risk? Uh, yes, yes it is. Very nice. Oh, and your guard found someone. That Yuichi we don't care about too much, but that's pretty nice. Uh, even though I told you to stay away from Shaq, now you have a nice of a, a bit of a 3-gen there, so eventually you could come back. Good stuff. Hmm. This is David, by the looks of it. I agree with that, by the way. That's not bad. I mean, the only problem is that you got rid of the stronger guard. But that's fine. Oh. You could use power through the window. Use it through the window and block it. Nice. Excellent job. But he's just leaving. You could have done that a bit sooner. A bit faster, maybe. Instead of stepping back. Yeah, he has an add-on. Oh, we fell for the bait. No, Briggy. Wow, okay. That was surprisingly fast. Uh, why are we going back here? We want to kick this, maybe. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I think I think I see what their mind's at. <laughs> nice. Now, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wow. She gave that to you for free. Uh, would I kick that, chat? I might kick that with a guard later. This girl, honestly, seemed to me like a really, really easy down. If you just... Took care of her. If she doesn't have overcome, the perk from Jonah that gives you a big speed boost after a hit, I think you probably, you probably cut her off from anything. Oh, use your guard. No need to, maybe. Yeah. If you react really quickly, you can shred pallets with your guard. Oh, this is nasty, nasty window into a nasty life that might reach all the way to Shark. Nah, nah, nah. Mistake, mistake, mistake. If you miss that detection, you're in trouble, dude. Way too risky. Way too risky. Now, let me ask you. Do you think this would have happened if our friend didn't stop to kick the gen? I think. Don't get me wrong. She might have done something different. But I guarantee you, you would have had her against the wall somewhere. She wouldn't have reached this. And if she didn't reach this, she wouldn't have reached that. And yeah. Yeah, prioritize the down. The gens are important. But at four gens? Get the downs, dude. Okay, this makes a bit of sense, because, like... Oh, but now you're... Now... Oh... Remember at the start when we said that there were two distortions? This is actually making things harder for you. Because <laughs> this guy is probably one of them. And these scratch marks are old. He's not going to leave any new ones. If he does have distortion, like we think, he's now leaving zero scratch marks and has no auto read. Yeah, see? No scratch marks. Luckily, you fought him, but guess what? You could have just... Yeah. I mean, it feels good to kick Jens on Temer wrong. 
But these gens are starting to be a bit far apart. Do not use guard here. Get a bit closer. I actually support this. Yeah, this is fine. This is good. Yeah, we knew he was going to do that. He's, there's a window on his right. Very good. Nice. He's, he's done this before. We have mental note. Uh, David is very prone to vaulting windows back and forth several times. In the first chase, you'll remember, if I remember correctly, that he vaulted one three times in like a second. There's a strong pallet here. You might need to break it with your guard. Yeah, shame, man. If we had the stronger guard, that would have been really good. Hi, Nikki Fox. Thanks so much for the raid. We're currently watching a viewer of ours. Uh, use guard. Use guard to break it, maybe. I would have used it to break it. Oh, that's good as well. I mean, he's gonna die. Damn, dudes. Oh, no! Oh, my God. Dude, if he gets that standard, if he gets that flag, he gets a speed boost and a protection. Uh, Chad, why is he doing this? Why is he, why is he doing this? Which makes sense, don't tell me wrong. DS or other person there. There's, it can't be decisive, guys. This guy, this guy hasn't been on hook anywhere recently. Flashlight says. Uh, we had one medkit, two toolboxes, so we don't have to worry about flashlight says. Flashbang safe, maybe, but let's be honest. I think that was a mistake. I think that was a mistake, and I'm gonna tell you why. One of the, like, even though I would argue that our killer has played very well so far, one mistake that I've seen him make is he doesn't use his Carnifex against pallets. When you have your Carnifex, which is the first of the guards, and a survivor does a pallet on you, if you react quickly, you can use power and insta-break it. It's almost like a Spirit Fury where you don't get stunned. It's insta. You go right through it. And he constantly keeps losing his Carnifex to small misplays. So now he has to cycle through two more guards before he gets to it. So you're not getting the value out of potentially your strongest guard. Especially without any other special add-ons. We got Painters though. But yeah, this guy not only hadn't been unhooked recently, he hadn't been unhooked at all. So obviously, yeah. Oh, I like this idea, but it's so hard. Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's insta-attack. No, don't kick it! You're giving him distortion again! Your guards are stronger when you're together. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, that's okay. Oh. Chat. What hook is this for this girl if she gets chased here? Can anyone tell me? Six? No, not number. I mean, I mean, what hook is it for her? Second? Oh. How did that, dude? That 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 David is insane. She's dead on hook, guys. Okay, I was like, okay, you must be right. No, she was dead on hook. That's really good. That's really good. We're looking at at least two kills here. And we know the title, because it's in the title, but yeah, at least two kills. So that's pretty good. Well done. We've seen a lot of beginner killers make the mistake where they have a person that don't hook and they leave them. Or they down them and then they don't do anything. So that was good. Oh, beautiful. That heart beautifully weighted. Nice job. Well done. Not his first rodeo. Good job. Uh, honestly, it's so hard. In this map, it's so hard to find the main goals. Yeah, uh, again, distortion. Uh, you might as well have kicked that gen. And yeah, Chad, this is going to be painless. It wouldn't have been painless. Spoilers. Uh, this is really stupid. Should we, should we talk about the adrenaline drop? Should we talk about that? This guy could come out of this hook with adrenaline. If you are really keen on it, you could drop him. And then if he has adrenaline, he gets insta-picked up and you have time to hit him. Uh, that's not going to happen in the next patch anymore, don't worry. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed up a little bit. <sighs> this is so risky, man. If we're, if we're playing for two kills, I would have stayed the fuck back there. But brave, you know, I respect that. 
Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Mmm, <gasps> she wasn't- she was clearly not gonna run back. Carney, let's go! See what I mean? Bam! Watch out, because she can outspeed you back to- no, that's good. Excellent job, guys. So what happened there? Why didn't the girl- why didn't the girl run away? The iridescent add-on. Dude, I love it when killers play with their- into their build. Oh. Oh, shit. Wait! Wait! It's gonna happen again! Haha! <laughs> Let's go! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My mama doesn't let me be out that late at night. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Curfew. Uh-oh. Curfew. Uh-oh. Panic. Now you know why this killer fucking sucks. Because he needs like four add-ons to, to be a normal killer. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Dude, dude. What he has done here is actually really smart. I'm really proud of you. I, I know. I know. Well done. Let's break it down in a second. Mmm. So good. So good. So good. Let's go. Yes! Nice comeback! Okay, okay. Now let's go back and explain why, why that was actually a really good play. Right, so... So here... Our killer already knows that it's very likely that this survivor is gonna beat him to this flag, right? And he's like, well, he, even if I had no it, he's gonna get endurance, he's gonna get a speed boost, I'm gonna hit him, I'm gonna give him another speed boost, by the time I recover, he's out of in the lobby. So instead, he acknowledges that, you can realize that this is the moment where he's like, okay, since my power is coming back, I'm gonna step back and use my power to trap you again. And when I trap you, I'm not gonna hit you. This is this is the second important part of this, right? I would have personally put the killer, the the the, the guard facing the exit gate a bit more, because this you almost miss him here. Luckily for you, or maybe you already knew this, the the jailer has the biggest radius, and look at this. Look at the radius, guys. You see how it's chasing after him? Boop! He got him. If you were playing the other ones, I'm not even sure that would have been in time. Yeah. Oh. And then, if you hit him, the, the hunt is over. So that would have been bad. So instead, you wait until your guard does the job. And then you just... You just... Dude, I wouldn't have done this better myself. This was beautiful. Let's go, dude. Beautiful recovery. Beautiful recovery. Nice job. Very nice. Oh man. You know what? I don't care that you made some tiny mistakes or whatever. That's so good. That's so good. You could have just hooked him there. He's dead on hook, but whatever, man. Maybe you get more points or some archive for hooking in the basement. No problem. That was exciting, man. But yeah, the reason why the survivor got blocked is because of the iridescent standard. That's the uh that's the build. That our killer has. Many times we see a build be used incorrectly, and this definitely wasn't one of them. Shame about your devour hope. But I'll tell you this much: even though your devour hope was cleansed, you still didn't use it right. When you load into a game, I'm guilty of this myself, by the way. If you have one or two hexes, look at where they are during the loading screen during the loading animation when you load into the map. And remember, and when one of them gets cleansed, okay. That sucks, but at least you know that a survivor is in there. They cleanse your totem next to a gen, and then later on, when you were lost and you didn't know where to look, you went to a completely different gen, you could have gone to that one, and he might have helped you. Still, though, great recovery, great gameplay. Good stuff, man. So we are watching a killer friend of only 500 hours play Oni on the game. Now, I'm going to make a few comments already. Uh, we have no add-ons, which is fine. But pretty brave. Run add-ons, guys. Run add-ons. This killer has some add-ons that are pretty boring. You know, they, they don't mess with your speed or anything. And they just make your power come sooner. Like the, the splinter hull or the broken wooden oni mask or whatever. So you could run those. You know, don't do this to yourself. But whatever. Maybe they didn't have any. Um, we see that there are three Claudettes, by the way. I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Whenever you play against three or four survivors of the same type, remember what makes them unique. And when you hook one of them, remember their position on the HUD. So if you hook the Claudette name Elysium, remember to yourself, 
Subaru 3, hooked one. Subaru 3, hooked twice. Subaru 3, dead, dead on hook, whatever. It, it's, it seems really stupid, but with 12,000 hours, I still have a lot of games where I suddenly mix up two survivors and I sometimes lose the games to that. Um, the build, very simple. Information from Discordance, it's good. Brutal, I mean, it doesn't work too well with his power, but it goes well with kicking gents, which is nice with nowhere to hide. And Gift of Pain, not much gen regression. This is going to be a tough game. Do we have any audio at all? I think it's just very quiet. Um, okay, I would tell you, b before we go into this, sorry for all the pauses, if you spawn in this map, it's very, very common that survivors spawn on the exit gates, which are always on the second floor. I highly recommend that if you don't know what to do, go to the second floor, go to the exit gate that seems furthest from you, and you will find scratch marks, nine times out of ten. And even if you don't, it's a very open area on the second floor, so you're likely to find someone. On the first floor, you could go room to room and find no one, but seems our survivor or killer has found someone. These scratch marks did not leave behind, did not leave you here. Absolutely unnecessary to break that. In fact, you have made this way better for the survivors. If this gen was 99 and you needed to pop this or something super urgently, I can see that, because maybe the other way wasn't good. But now this gen is objectively better for the survivors because if you chase from this direction they go to this pallet if you come from this pallet they go towards where you are you made a cool the sac a dead end an open end never break these doors it's a it's a good rule of thumb to never break the breakable walls in this map that are next to a sliding door uh only a few exceptions and they're pretty common sense like oh there's two gens, and I want them to be. I want it to be closer for me to navigate around. Then, then sure, but as a general rule, don't do that. In most other maps, breaking a breakable wall is typically a good idea and helps. This one, don't bother. Now we have the problem where in this map on the bottom floor, you can go room to room and you have no info because it's very close. I wouldn't kick that, but we have nowhere to hide, so it is a good idea. That's perfect. Mm, you need to make it look like you don't know. That's perfect. So good. This girl, we don't know that, right? But she could have had spring burst. And if she has spring burst and you make it look like you know she's there, she's going to run and not give you a hit. But making it look like you're clueless, that was really good and subtle. For a 500-hour player, that's ought to be really nice. Uh-huh. She's going to drop that pallet, maybe. Nope. No joke, I would go for these two. If you can get your... Here's the thing. If you get your power out of... By getting two, two hits right now, that would be awesome. When you get a hit, you get 40% of your power. When you get a hit, you get another 40%. Then you get a bit of blood orbs and you have it, right? That would be really good right now. And if you fail and they drop a pallet or something, you can always go back and follow the blood from this Claudette. She's not going to escape magically. But she does have a medkit, so that would really suck. Mm, interesting idea. Yeah. I would definitely, definitely go for that. I wouldn't break this. You're kind of giving them a warning. Oh, oh no, no, no. There's a sliding wall. It's on the other side, man. Don't break this. No. No, you had two survivors. Two survivors in another dead end where the only entrance was through here. Sure, they have a pallet. But after they drop it, there's two survivors. They're going to get clumsy. One of them is going to get in the way of each other. Oh. Uh, all right, nowhere to hide, checking the corners. That's pretty good. One of them might have left. We interrupt the survivor that's healing. That's awesome. We don't get any blood. We want to we interrupt it. Good. Doesn't matter what it takes. Now you have enough blood here to probably get your power. You should get it. As you walk back. Very good. That was really good. It would have been really pointless to break this pallet and then just sit in place like a, like a garden sprinkler collecting everything. It's better to... Walk forward and then just drag them back behind you so you won't waste any time. That was subtle, but that was really good. Uh, Shemblis, thank you for the 29. That was not subtle at all. You guys see what I mean, right? Yeah, that was real good. You have enough blood down there and she'll give you some. I would probably ignore her though. She's in the safest, easiest to play room in the game, I swear. That's really good. I mean, you can also look into the mindset of, well, I'm just going to get rid of these pallets and later they'll be gone, which is fair. But keep in mind that you don't have a lot of generator regression or generator slowdown perk, so there's not going to be a later. <laughs> like, in five minutes, the gens, there's going to be five gens done. 
That's really good. You should swing here to fall. Mm. Mm, I love that. Oh, that's great, man. That's fantastic. So, little, little, little explanation. We've made some videos explaining this. But a killer, when they swing forward, they get a burst of speed. Right? And then, obviously, the reason why killers aren't swinging forward constantly around the map is because then they get slowed down. But if you do the swing of speed and then you fall down, guess what? Even if you're slowed down, gravity still affects you all the same. So the fact that he's slowed down during the fall doesn't matter. But the fact that he gets a little bit of a speed boost when approaching the hole does matter. Because look how close he is. Look how close he is to Claudette. I don't think it would have been a big deal. You might have still caught her, but you never know. So good stuff. Good stuff. Mechanically, I'm very impressed so far. We haven't seen you use your power yet. And honestly, in this map, you might as well not have a power. Oh, uh, this is a bit of um, Yeah, this might be a situation where you need to renovate. Uh, and I think it's fine. I think he still gets that gift of pain. It's not a pain rush, though. Ba basement might have been an idea. All right. Out of the uh, a really good play. He has the popper's charm. Good. Good taste. That's also very important. Not for gameplay, but, you know, make sure you're a good person. Keep it up. Uh, we see faint scratch marks. Someone's been here. Maybe time to kick that gen and see them if you don't know where they are. Oh, dude. You see? This guy would be so dead right now. No, he's not here. He left through the hole you made. Nice, nice. Stop power, stop power. He's behind you. Ooh, oh, I don't like this, man. You see what's going on, right? Oh, man. He has a pallet here and a window. And that might have been balance or life. Oh. Okay, good reaction there. I like that. But now he uses the window. And now your entire power is gone. He's not looking behind him, but he's just going to be fine. He's going to have this pallet. All right. <sighs> this is just tough. Ooh, that was kind of a nice play. I He tried to do a flick there, which, you know. You keep trying that, King. No problem. That's not a problem at all. Uh, you might want to break it, yeah. That sucks. So, yeah. Uh, Oni without add-ons has a duration of 45.45 seconds. Very specific. 45-ish seconds, right? And we just wasted all of that to get nothing. A pallet out of the way. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Damn. That sucks, man. And it wasn't really your fault too much. <gasps> oh, shoot. No. Mm. Okay, this is a bit of a knowledge problem. Right now, this girl is way... Like, you are in between her and this pallet. She's not going to beat you to this pallet. But you know that there's discordance. And you see the other Claudette. Don't you? Do you see the other Claudette or no? Let's see. Uh, do you see her? Is there someone else in that room that we see? Maybe there's no one else. Maybe that discordance... No, that discordance is super old. That discordance is super old. No, there was someone there. There was someone there. Yeah, there they are. Damn. Unlucky. I think that in this situation... In this tile, you must remember that there's very often... I'm not sure if 100%, but very often there's a pilot on this side. And in fact, you've seen it before. Remember at the start of the game? You should have remembered... That and gone for the second person. As long as there's a second person, which there was. Sucks, but yeah. Uh, good job trying to salvage it. But yeah, that other person's f far away now. See? Oh, man. Like, this girl would have not reached this safety without your help. Without you breaking that breakable. I mean, to be fair, she just completely wasted it. Watch out with this pallet. Do not get hit here. This is the kind of pallet you want to respect. Very good hit. We get 40% of our power. Yeah, and go for the two people. Go for the two people. Unfortunately, these two people are not corralling this hole, sadly, because we opened that. That's really good. That's really good. Now, this guy has already shown you that he's pretty good. Yeah, he's healthy, but... Oh, what do we do? There's going to be a... Hit him, hit him, hit him. No, no, this is a mistake that I myself made. Like, and it's a very natural mistake. I'm going to tell you why. So right now, our friend has two options, right? Either hit a Starion from Baldur's Gate 3 right here. But then he goes on a cooldown. Or, and this seems very attractive, right? 
Why don't we go and pick up these few blood orbs and then I can use my power and then he doesn't make distance and then I'm gonna hit him. Uh, mistake. If you are not in power, unless the orb is literally, literally within a meter of you and it takes like half a second, always take the hit. Always take the hit. This guy has proven to you earlier that even when he is cornered in a place, he can still buy time. You never know if he has a 99 Spring Burst or what. You never know. If there's a pallet up there and he uses light, you'll never see him again. You, sh he, you had a free hit. Right there, a free hit. Take it. Take it. If you use your power on this guy, you're going to be making a mistake. Mm. Especially considering that you haven't even hooked him and it's not like, oh, I need to tunnel him out. All right. He's not in that good of a spot in this room, but it's just... Yeah. Now he's going to find a good spot. This room always has a pallet. Uh, unfortunately, you haven't... Unfortunately, you haven't zoned him. So he's in a spot here. Uh, you've lost him. Oh, that's pretty good, though. Adapting to the information from this Discordance. Excellent shit. Do we go for a, an extra hit? I would. I would even cut him off from the exit. Excellent job. Maybe cancel here? Cancel? Perfect. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, hold a bit. Oh, you, you could have... You, you can hold it less than that. So it's not confusing. Excellent job. Now we hook the other girl because she's been recovering for a bit longer. Good stuff. Good stuff, right? Uh, Shuedo, thanks so much for the 33. Great stuff. Oh, I like this thinking as well. I like this thinking as well. I'm going to put her further in so that, you know, like, it, it might seem like it's the order of factors doesn't like, uh, alter the, the... Oh, that's so good. Oh, sorry. I was I sped that up a little. But, but putting her further in means that he can actually lock this down a little bit. I would have still picked up that girl and maybe saved the kick for later. But that's okay. Maybe... Oh, oh no. What is she doing? Uh, I mean, he probably hears things we don't. You're not gonna get that hit. I... Yeah, one hit. Don't be greedy. Oh, actually. Mm. It doesn't matter who you hook here. I'm not gonna lie. The Claudette seemed clueless uh, compared to this guy. This guy was pretty good. Pick him up. Pick him up. Pick him up. Don't be greedy. Just hook him. Ah, I s like, I like your idea, man. Oh, actually, that paid off big time. No, 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 no. Right, right. Oh, it's like he's carrying a little bit too much, you know? It's like seeing someone new at the gym trying to put on a lot of weight. You know that he they can lift a lot, but not that much yet. You need to go back. You had... Look, that guy... That guy's picked up now. These guys are coordinated. They, 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 they are doing the the normal thing. I mean, that being said, you know, it's not a big deal. <coughs> I agree with hooking here, by the way. F screw it. You, you, don't, you don't care about camping this. You want to go for someone. All right, Chad. So, so far, who have we hooked? Do you guys remember? It's difficult, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, all the Claudettes... And none of the non claudets So if I remember correctly, that's a hook on each of the claudets which is nice, but also easy for you to mix it up. Yeah, good stuff though. All of that interaction between them and all of the staying injured means that... Wow, Jesus. Unfortunately, camping this guy would be an incredibly horrible mistake. Because they're not going to do that gen, clearly. Oh, man, it's kind of sucks, man. You have a lot of info perks and none of them are doing anything right now. And they could have deliverance, you know, because it's their first hook. Oh, risky, man, risky, risky. Believe, believe it or not, that is risky. Watch out, man, when using power. They healed immediately? I would open that locker or something. Oh, wait, no, they... What? Did they do that behind the crate? Are they behind this crate or something? Oh, no, they're, they're just straight on the hook. You missed that. Yeah, you didn't, you, you didn't see any scratch marks. Yeah, you were here and you were expecting scratch marks running away. But this guys must have had will make it. They didn't even care. They were actually less smart than you gave them credit for. They were both right here. You could have gotten a down or two. Maybe you don't call that not if she had off the record, but still. Oh, that sucks. Wait. That, oh, that was a good play by her. Okay, don't use, don't use dash. Get close. Hold up. No! No! Oh. That looks so clumsy. You don't need to do that. Uh, guys, when you play Oni, when you're learning, okay? And if you don't understand this 100% yet, 
go to a private game, send yourself to this map or Dead Dog Saloon, and go to a breakable wall, okay? Play with bots with no miter or something so that they drop blood and practice this. If you hold your power like a quarter of a second, you can do this. Whoop, bam, and insta down. You don't need to you don't you don't need to do the whole animation that gives him like a lunge. It's hard to control, it gives survivors reaction time, as you could see. So it's not ideal. This should be hook number two for Claudette number three. Let's see if I'm right. That is really good. So obviously, right now, what we should do is check on the gents. Dude, this should be a really good game for you. We should check on the gents that are nearby. Not give her camp or anything, right? That would be stupid. And then when she's out of that hook, I'm so sorry, Claudette, but you need to die. Yeah, go back, see if they're starting to heal there or what. Ooh, that... Is, chat, is that the Claudette that we're after or one of the other Claudettes? Can we know that? Is it possible to know that even though we see her aura? I know this is a simple one for most of you, but... Yes, why? She's injured, exactly. When you see someone's aura, you see the position of their body. And you can tell when a survivor runs with an animation of being injured, they, they lean forward, right? Uh, I, I, as I said, for most of you, you probably know that, but maybe it's... Yeah, look at her. That is an injured survivor. So at this point, you you must think of this Claudette as the person that is then on hook. The only person that is then on hook right now. Doesn't mean that you have to chase her. No. But you might want to. Really good. Good swings. Mechanically, this killer is playing very, very well for a person with less than 500 hours, by the way. I have to say. Like, it's, it's, quite, it's quite impressive. Well, uh, Brutal Strength doing some leg work. Uh, you have a survivor that's injured that's really decent that's never been hooked. You don't want him. They, they're they they're either healing or not doing gents together. Oh, the Scordons. A bit too early. You don't... Even if you know where they were a few seconds ago, you can wait a little bit. I... This is now the third or fourth time that we see our friend here use their power when they only have a vague hint. Nothing wrong with just waiting it a little bit, you know? No, they're not here. This pilot's gone. They're not here. They're making a lot of distance elsewhere. Oh! Who's this? <gasps> nice shot! Wow! Nice angle! Alright, so this gives us a lot more options. Claudette number two and Claudette number three are both dead on hook. So survivors are gonna have to play with one of their hands behind their back, if you will. Alright, go straight there. Yeah, that's good. Honestly... Oh, that's unfortunate. Do you guys know how much easier this match would have been? If our poor fucking killer didn't fucking open that room, man. I think you get him here. Ah, whatever. He's not your target, so that's okay. They pr he probably left a lot of blood on the gen itself. Yeah, that's good. I would kick that. I would kick that. Pick the blood while you look around. That's excellent. Is that the claw that you want? Yes, she is! Kill her! Oh! She's so done for! Good stuff. Do not chase her directly. Good, good. Cut her off. Uh, okay. I would have maybe gone the other direction, but that's okay. On her left is a pallet that's really not that strong. This pallet is not that good. With Brutal, you can just break it. No! I mean... No, no! Chase, 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 chase. Oh, man. Ah. Listen, listen. Listen, I know that you want to defend the gents, right? But at this point, there's nothing wrong with thinking to yourself... I'm going to remove this Claudette from the equation. And who knows? Without maybe even using my power. And who knows? Maybe then I get two downs. And if I get two downs, and one of them is the Claudette that is dead, then that's two kills. And then if the other guy doesn't get picked up, that's three kills. I win the game. You need to think of in endgame terms. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, for example, in chess, at the start, you do not want to move the, the, the king. But at the end, it's very important that you move the king out. Because there's not a lot of pieces left, right? Well, this is the same. You needed to prioritize. There... Oh, man. Yeah. This is a pilot from before. This, by the way, is the only Claudette that is not dead on hook. I'm fairly sure. So that fucking blows. Yeah. Even if you catch her, I believe. He's playing for hooks, not kills. Uh, chat. I'm sorry, like, I, like, don't tell me wrong, can I have a debate with someone whether or not the game should be based around hooks or kills? Yes. But if you tell me that you're playing for hooks and that that's why you're making mistakes, guess what? If you kill them, 
and they die, then you can get more hooks afterwards. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, you know how he would have gotten more hooks if he had killed the Claudette one or two minutes ago? Then he would be getting more hooks. If you go for hooks, but that means that you don't get any hooks, you know what I mean, right? This is a fair way. Nah, chat, I'm sorry. Unless you guys send me a message and you tell me, Hey, Odds, it really turns me off uh, to, to kill a person early and I want to hook multiple people. That's, that's fine. That's okay. But I don't think that's what we've seen here, honestly. I don't think that's what we've seen here. What we've seen here is very unfortunate situations, a very unlucky uh, wall break that made everything harder. And survivors basically given a bunch of like survivors getting pummel left and right without much to show for it, which which no one really enjoys as a killer. I think, you know, it definitely feels a lot better if you put a lot of work and you're rewarded for it. Yeah, GG's. Uh, not much to do in the end game. Uh, you'll see that I didn't break that play by play. This was over. And here, unfortunately, like remember earlier when I told you that you should run some add-ons. If you had the yellow add-on, they gave you six extra seconds of power. This girl is toast. This girl is mince meat. You can put her in your next sandwich. She's done for. But you didn't have any add-ons. <sighs> so unlucky, man. Uh, also, I have to say your build was very, very lightweight, which is fine. Respect for that. I mean, you're playing on hard mode, right? Cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, overall, a really good game. The biggest takeaways. If a survivor is dead on hook, this is a very common mistake that a lot of killers make. Lock on to that survivor, especially if there's like one gen left. And especially if you have your power save that kill that survivor, that's one kill. They can't undo that. And then you still have power to maybe get one or two or who knows, all three of them left. Yeah. So, and very important in this map in particular and in a few other places, think before you break a breakable wall. Does this benefit me? Is it really that important? Like, let's go back. Let's just explain why it was such a bad idea. This was a good moment when our friend broke that breakable wall. Let's be honest. Did our killer need to check this gen? Is there any chance that there are four survivors on that gen? No. Is there any chance that there's two survivors on that gen? The scorpions didn't even go off. Probably not. Could there be one survivor on that gen? Maybe. But it didn't make any noise, presumably. We didn't hear it. But I, I, think, it, I think there wasn't anyone here. And when we see the breakable wall, you'll see that the pistons aren't moving. So that means that there's no noise. There is zero reason to break that wall. So, yeah, think carefully before you break them. Now, let's see what our friend had at the end. Do we see their build-out? Nice cosmetic, though. That's pretty good. All right. Pfft. All right. So, yeah, this is a bit unfortunate. So, you have one info perk that doesn't work on Vittorio. Uh, the e one of the easiest maps in the game to play for survivors. And they, m they almost all have Windows of Opportunity. That will make it, which saved their butts. You saw that, right? They even had a styptic, which I don't remember them using in chase, but they could have used it last second. This was tough. Uh, also, on top of you not having any, uh, anything to really regress generators, they had stakeout, which is nice, and in their map like this, they probably got a lot of value out of it. Uh, Kindred to see you live on almost everyone. Yeah, dude, this was tough, man. This was tough, and believe it or not, despite being the lowest. Uh, prestige, Vittorio is probably the most experienced survivor, just based on his build alone, probably. So yeah, uh, when you notice that one survivor stands out from the rest, definitely do not throw everything at them. And another tip to reiterate, do not use your only power if you don't have at least a very good idea where one survivor is. Don't don't use it too early. But yeah, uh, good match, mechanically very impressive place for a killer with only 470 hours. Um, some really quick decision making as well, that was really good. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, we said this at the beginning, this map is awful for Oni. It's such garbage for Oni. Almost all of his power gets diminished, you know? Yeah. So, that was a big disadvantage uh, going into this, but, you know, you're aware of that, I bet. GG's, what played? Look at the title? Yeah, that is kind of funny. Anyway, uh, we are watching an Nemesis player. We do not know how many hours they have. Let's have a look at their build. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, I have to admit, that was a little funny. He did, he did like a, like a spin around 
<laughs> as he as if he is a surveillance camera. <laughs> Scroy, thank you for the gift that sucks. <laughs> I hardly like this killer. Thank you, Graham, for the 55. All right, so having a look at the build. We have an add-on to get to tier 2 and tier 3 faster when hitting survivors. Good stuff. An add-on to make them a bit slower when they use their vaccine. Not bad, especially for a brown. Then we have eruption and surge. Watch out, because surge applies when you kick a gen, and eruption applies when you down someone, but only with basic attacks. And then Franklin's, which, I mean, it's good, right? They drop their items. Not my favorite perk on Nemesis, honestly, because you should be using the tentacle, but not bad. And lethal, honestly, is pretty good. Um, we see one survivor, two survivors, three, four survivors. That means nobody, 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 nobody has distortion, which is nice. Uh, who would you chase here, chat? Like, first instinct would tell you, oh, these guys are close to gens. We should chase these guys. Forget about these guys. These guys are, on, are, are around main. They're going to split up in a really ugly manner. It's going to be impossible for you to, to, to get a hit or a tentacle anytime soon. Uh, main is just ugly. Go for these guys who are in the open, and there's two of them. And you never know, maybe one of them thinks that they're hidden, maybe they try to hide behind the car. Easy tentacle, and then hit the second tentacle, and bam, tier 2, immediately. So I would go left, let's see what our friend does. They started a little bit slow, but that's okay. Um, that's good, that's really good. Uh, is this yellow house? Yeah, yellow house. Good job going for the guy that's... Now, you know what this guy has, right? That's a, that's a spring burst, he was walking. Wait, no, it wasn't. That's good, that's really good. Chat, this is really good. He hits the guy. He made his tentacle a bit predictable, but the guy didn't react, so whatever, right? And now he goes for the other guy, knowing that if he hits the other guy, he goes into tier 2, and then Nemesis really becomes a good killer. So far, so good. Is the audio too loud? Hi, Baba. This is very impressive. Can we pick up the trail of the guy that was here? Check on that gen, then maybe go main. I actually like the fact that he approaches from the left. It's gonna push him into main, but maybe it's unexpected. Nah, this gen wasn't nothing. Maybe we should have not. Uh, zombie, up the house, following someone very closely. Uh, chest. I'm not sure if uh, basement or what, but you guys hear that, right? Uh, yeah, he's trying to look for a room that doesn't exist. That guy was below, I'm afraid. That was Leon. You can tell by his grunts. Mm. This, this is a little bit of Listen, we know we know there were multiple survivors here, but it's very it's very clear that one of them has gone. Yeah, this is fine. Just just get out. Just not nah, nah, this is too risky. Sure, if you find one guy, that would be awesome, but at this point, what are the chances? The gen is literally at zero. Why would someone go to a gen at zero and then go into a locker? They would just run away. This is this has set you back a little bit. But luckily survivors have been a bit clumsy. So, yeah, this is a good kick with Eruption. It will take 10% damage. This is unfortunately... No, this is fortunately not the Ash, which means that if we hit him with a tentacle, tier 2. But he had a 99 Spring Burst. Who's this? Leon, let's go. Get, get a tentacle on him. Let's go, tier 2. Wow. Okay, now we don't need to use a tentacle as much anymore. Just use it when it makes sense. We can go for him once a bit more. Nice job, zombie. Easy peasy. Go for the easy M1 there. Even better. Dude, this guy's insane! Does he offer coaching? I wanna learn from him! Ooh, ooh, no, 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 oh no, brother, no, brother, no, bro, no, no, oh, no, no, oh no. Okay, I take it back, oh no. Oof, okay, um, this is a bit unfortunate. Alright, it, it wasn't all for nothing, we got tier 2, and we got a 10% thing, and this, and it might have attracted the zombies. All right, uh, whenever you see boil over, you want to avoid going into rooms, uh, unnecessarily, of course, sometimes you don't have a choice, but you want to avoid going into buildings and tight rooms because you will get stuck on everything. It's out of the heart for me on PC with full control. I don't want to imagine how difficult it is on controller or console or both. So going into that building with this red horsey perk, mm -mm, bad idea. Now let's look at the opportunities we had. We had a hook right here. A bit awkward, not gonna lie, a bit unlucky that it was so far, but you could have made it. And you could have also gone for this one. It would have been awkward, but you would have made it. Come in here. I mean, look at the path you gotta go. You gotta go here, then here, then out the back. That's nightmare. That's nightmare. Good job dropping him. I would have honestly gone for the person above and just trust these zombies to harass this gen. Because if you go here and this person begins to run into main, it's hell, dude. It's hell. As a, as a nemesis, your problem is that it takes three hits to down someone, right? You don't want you, you don't want to chase someone that's super far away. 
and then they get a spin burst, then they get a hit, then they get another hit, and they're still not down, you know? <sighs> Look at this guy. He's about to use another spin burst on you. I honestly... Mm, kind of tough. But whatever. Pressure him as much as possible. Uh, difficult place to use your power, no joke. This is really good. He has to leave now. Hit him with your M1. Hit him with your M1. Make him lose his uh, item there. No biggie. Good stuff, good stuff. That's really good. If that medkit had two heals, now it only has one. That's unfortunately not how this tentacle works. Uh, really smart use of a 99, but he's going to a place that is not very safe. So you chase him down and make sure he drops the pallet. Once he drops the pallet, you break it with... with... Nah, 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 and what? Yeah, just, yeah. Don't, don't use the tentacle too early, unless it's like some kind of bait. All right. So, unfortunately, just losing one hook at the beginning, like our friend did, is already such a... a setback, that it could be that the rest of the game is played really well, and there's no more chances to come back, just because... Just because that early game was so bad. But I, I believe, I believe. There must be a way to win this, right? Amalia, thank you so much for the Prime. You have won my heart. I've never played Killer or Controller except for maybe one time. It was hard. Jen's making no noise. Let's go back. Uh, yeah, go for that group that unhooked. Go, go for that group that unhooked. Are you... Is it Halloween? Are you asking for candy? Why are you here? You, you are... Take, you're going to a building that might have no one. While these people are getting a car blank to just heal under the hook. For what reason? Even if you don't tunnel, just go for the person that rescued. Look, they had three people here healing and having a sausage party and you missed out on the sandwiches. Would have been really good if this guy was dead on hook right now, but it's not. That's good. Let's keep chasing him, maybe. Not worth kicking this Shen, in my opinion. If you lose, if this is how I don't feel, guys. Look, you gotta understand your weakness in this map is that if a survivor pre-runs, you will take five years to even catch up, let alone engage with the chase, right? So you need to be super careful. Watch out, zombies aren't always super accurate when they show you someone, but they, they seem to be. Oh, that's really good. Go for Leon, go for Leon. Forget about that guy. That's really good. Leon, 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 Leon. I mean, that was a really nice, that was a really decent tentacle, by the way. I feel like the survivors are not putting up much of a fight, but still, uh, that was very impressive. Unnecessary. That was unnecessary. Just M1 him. You can get to tier 3 super easily. Also, boil over. Alright, you know there's a hook right behind you. That's very good. We saw the auto of someone there because they got hit by eruption. Very good, very good. Don't get stuck, friend. You got this, man. You got this. Come on. Good stuff, right? Oh, watch out. You need to be precise. Spam the space bar. Worst feeling in the world if they escape last second. Alright, so we know that that is... Wait, was that gender aggressing chat? He couldn't kick it? Uh, it is aggressing. He couldn't kick it. Uh, that was Steve, by the way. Steve has shown us that he has Sprimbers. We do not want to mess with him. That is Leon, though. Go for Leon. Go for Leon. He's all yours. Oh, he's in a really, really bad spot. Wow. And... All right. Listen. 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 Getting... Like, if you can down... And it's an easy choice between tentacle and fizz. Tentacle. Why not? Make him blue, right? We like the color blue. This guy had a 0.01 survival chance. And you just increase that unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. If you hit him with... Even if you were successful and you didn't miss. You would have given him a speed boost to reach this window right here. Which is honestly a stronger threat to you than any of these survivors. Even though there are four survivors. The biggest enemy for you is this window right here. This window... Arch Nemesis, final boss, you know, super boss, 10,000 million HP. Why are we letting him reach it? M1 him. He played that so bad, M1 him. And he would be on his second hook? No. Is that correct, Chad? Second hook, if I'm not mistaken? Or at least you would get a hook, whatever. Super unnecessary. And now you have a choice of chasing a person in a bad spot or going back. And honestly, yeah, let's go back. It would be his first. Yeah, we, we hooked Steve after all, didn't we? It's also really funny that there is a Ellen in this match. We hadn't seen it. All right, tier three gives you range, but it doesn't give you wings. That was that was never going to hit, Chad. Like, you would need to be another meter close or so. Like, it doesn't... Like, that's too far. Slightly too far. All right. This is okay, though. If one of these boyos goes down, that's okay. I would chase the guy that's injured. 
forget about the tentacle man they can go the entire game without using their that is a good hit though they can go the entire game without using vaccines excellent job but okay i'm gonna tell you a secret chat nemesis is one of the best pallet breakers in the game arguably he is especially now that they nerf comp 33 he's the best pallet breaker in the game why would you break this pallet right now even though it's really fast why would you break it right now they don't have any means necessary if they do who cares probably they don't but most likely they don't so leave this pallet here if a survivor later on comes to this pallet and they vaulted in front of you guess what you're just gonna hit them and if they loop around it then you can break it but right now you have a guy that's running away you better leave it for later if later you are looped you can break it and then the survivor is trapped in here Right now, you have something to do. Don't break it. Don't break it. You, you guys understand why I'm saying that breaking it later is better? And also, if if for the rest of the game, no survivor comes back to that pallet, well, you don't worry about it. You can break it when a survivor takes you there next time. And it would be better. Do not hit this girl. Oh, no. I mean, she lost her item, which seems really appealing, but... That was a bit of a... Uh, Controller aim. Do not let him make it to main. Why are you doing this? No. Huh? Huh? What was that? Hello? Okay. Well, he has DVD premium. All right. Chat. What? What? What button do you use on your controller to break a pallet? Because I'm gonna take it out. Why would you do this? This is the easiest pallet. This is such a garbage pallet. You should have the easiest time getting a hit around it with a basic M1. If you try to mind game with the tentacle, yeah, okay, whatever. This should have been a hit. This guy, let's let's go back. This guy, if I saw this on the computer screen, I would expect a hit to happen within eight seconds at most, even if he holds forward. Let's see how long it goes. Okay. It's now been 10 seconds. It's now been uh, 15 seconds. It's gonna be 20 seconds and we're still nowhere close to hitting him. 30 seconds, nowhere close to hitting him. These, these moments, you're losing the game to that. You're, in, in these seconds, you're losing the game. You know, you're letting everyone get a heal for free. You're getting, you're letting gems happen. You do not hit over this easily. Uh, unfortunately, if they crouch, your hitbox goes from top to, to bottom so it doesn't go through the car. This should be an easy tentacle. I mean, good effort, but also well played by him, you know, whatever. Uh, you were better off chasing in the other direction. Don't tell me you're gonna leave this guy. Oh my lord. No, he's dead. He's dead AF. You need a bit more comfort. He, you had it. This skill has never been hooked. You do not care about her. You do not care about her at all. Yeah... You know that meme of like, oh, you know, gamblers, most gamblers quit before they make it big. You were about to make it big. The 777 was about to pop up. There's no blood on the ground. So this is most likely Ellen. I think there's no blood anyway. It's hard to see with the YouTube compression, but I'm pretty sure there's no blood. So this is Ellen. And honestly, she can, she can go piss off, you know? You expected the survivor to drop and they do for some reason. And they're injured despite this guy's insane. Please, I want him to do search. All right, chat. Keep in mind, there are like 5 billion generators around us, right? Well, not too many, but there's a few generators around us. If we M1 him, we trigger this perk right now, which can tell us a lot of information, right? If a gen is like half done, it takes damage. And if all the gens are at zero, then none of them take damage. And you see that the perk doesn't trigger. And that also is information, right? Look at that gen down below in that house right here. You don't really know. If this gen is 99, 0, whatever, you know, it's it's hard to tell from up here. Well, you would be able to know immediately if this perk doesn't work. Instead, our, our, our killer decides to use his tentacle way too much at times when you really don't need to. And even if you had hit him, which you didn't because you missed, you would have given him a speed boost. Like, there is... I like to play Nemesis and go for tentacle hits a lot, but there's a time and a place for them. And this wasn't it. Like, sure, they're all going to be infected and they're going to run out of medications to get rid of them. You know what else you're going to run out of, though? Generators. 
Oof, that was that was a grab that got cancelled. And that could have been really, really bad. Luckily, it, it resulted in a hit. Picking up against the wall. Very good. There's a hook to your right. Didn't miss it. Good stuff. Leon's only second, I believe. No, that's his first because we never hooked him. The zombie is telling us that there's someone here. And look at the gens that you have left. This is an abomination, dude. These guys have played so badly. They've given you chances to down them so many times. That is Steve. If we look at the HUD, we see that only one of them is infected. So that would be Steve. And if he had been down earlier, he would be dead on hook. That is Ellen down there. And you can't even camp this guy. Because it's it's almost a minute and a half on the hook before they have to rescue. This is so bad. You have a gen on the second floor, a gen on the bottom floor, a gen in the middle. This is so tough. Oh, yo, Ashley jumped out on the right. You just heard them go, Ooh. I mean, this can work, but yeah, this might be similar to the game that we watched just earlier, where a killer kicked the gens 20 times and never got it down. Nah, he's gone. He went for the rescue or whatever. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> Damn. I, I, it's so painful. Oh, what happened? What happened here? There's a bit of a there's a bit of a time skip. Wait, chat. What happened? Let's look at the hook timer. Look at the hook timer. About ten seconds. And oh. what the hell was that? It's a wormhole. Yeah, it looks like it's been only a few seconds. Uh, it seems Hambroni hits stage two though. Yeah, he hits stage two. They didn't rescue him for some insane reason. There is a zombie right here. You might need to kick it. Oh. It's chasing Steve most likely. Oh, no, there's no one here, man. There was someone there. He just jumped down by the corner. No other corner. Well, this is fine, but. <laughs> Right, so the Ashley who was unaccounted for went for the rescue. Chad, let me tell you right now. If the Steve is not about to go down and he's not, your best bet is to just go a bit earlier. You should have gone and gone for the Leon. Make the unhook very difficult or tunnel him off. If Leon goes down, he's dead. You hit that gem with eruption. Then maybe you have time to get a kill or two more after. But now Leon's going to get healed because you're so far. They're just going to heal. Uh, Steve is going to weasel his way. I cannot watch this. No. You could have downed her. And he would have damaged that jet and trigger eruption on the other one. Why do you want everyone to be blue? Like, it's a good thing if survivors are infected. It messes with them on your first hit, right? But when they're out of the injury, you don't have to. You just don't have to. Oh, man. Oh. It's like buying a... Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's like buying a fire spell before the ice boss. Or before the fire boss, which is ineffective. Like, you can do it, but you don't have to. You know what I mean? You don't have to. Like, it doesn't hurt. Like, it's not something that you're not allowed to do, but there's no point to it. You're using your kit wrong. Now, that's really good. Damage the gen in the middle. Damage the gen in the main. There's only one problem. Hit, hit that zombie. Hit that zombie. Just kill him. Yeah, that's good. You don't need to freak out. There's only one problem. This kills on her first hook. She can be here forever. And honestly, uh, it's a bit concerning. Now, I think that if I know this killer, judge from what, judging from what we see, he's going to go on that main. He's going to kick that gen. The Steve is playing carefully, so he's going to leave. A bit unlucky there. Wait a minute, chat. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go for Are you serious? understand sometimes there's like three survivors all healthy on a gen 99 but this guy's injured if you down him with a punch the gen takes damage already right i need you to hook him right there there's a hook there you've seen it before don't drop down don't drop down there's a hook right there 
Uh, so Boilover has this side effect, right? Where it, it hides the auto of hooks near you. But if we go back a little bit, you will remember... Shut, uh, around here. Look, do you, do you remember this moment? The killer... Uh, there was a moment, th there's a hook right in that room. And the killer literally walked by it. I can't, I can't watch this. It's, don't ever do this. Just kill the people that are dead on hook. There's a hook right on the next room over. You should have gone there. And then the Steve would have been screwed. Because he cannot take two hits. Now you... Like, you get him killed, which is good. But you you also force yourself out of the building. Which is going to destroy you. And Boy Lover also gets stronger when you drop down from a height. Which could have been risky, but I mean, in this case, the... The hook was very close. Now, thank God, thank God that zombie was there protecting the gen. We hear someone coughing above. That would be Ashley, I think. He dropped from the window. I mean, apply eruption, sure thing. Ay, ay, ay. Chad, am I having a deja vu or is this the second time? The killer sh hits the bush. You, you, you heard him fall down and you've seen scratch marks running out. It makes perfect sense that he just ran out. No one's gonna hide there. You're... That's Steve? Very good. Get ahead and get back probably or check the other gen. 99% uh, Springbirds on the Steve. That's pretty smart of him. Have that bush. Oh my god! He just used uh, Renato's perk blood rush to get a second... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, fake a- fake a tentacle! Fake a tentacle and you could have won him. He's gonna heal in three, two, one. And now it's healthy. That was a good attempt. Alright, Chad, I'm gonna tell you the problem, okay? So, you might not know what this perk does, but I'll tell you. He used Springburst and he's exhausted. And now he's healthy and dead on hook. So, he's using a perk that allows him to trade a health state that he gets back over 20 seconds, I think. And he gets a second spring burst. However, he messed up big. Let me tell you why. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He needs about another 10 seconds before the perk will heal him. At this moment, cut your tentacle off, cut it off, toss it in the trash, go for the M1, and he goes down. Unless he has Metal of Man, but he doesn't have Metal of Man, let me tell you that. So what I would have done is pretend to use my tentacle, he's gonna think that he's the smartest guy ever, then cancel it, then BAM. Since you're tier 3, if you pretend to use your tentacle, you don't slow yourself down very much. Instead, what does our friend do? You should have waited at the pallet and tried to do some kind of mind game around it, get the M1, maybe? Instead, what do you do? Yeah. And now, of course, he's gonna heal. And now... You're gonna leave him, probably. Or worse. Oh no. This building. Just someone him, please. Just someone him. Do not miss a whiff. That's good. That's good. I mean, if you kill him quickly. That was a bit of a poor tracking. Okay. That didn't happen. Oh, don't let him reach that window, bro. That's good. Mm, painful. Oh, might have hope or something. That's it. That's it. That was a good one. All right, chat. This gate's being open. You saw this zombie earlier. Uh, get his hands up. I think I think they're too late. Oh no! He tried to look at the wall while picking. Well, yeah, they're too late. That was so unnecessary. That was so unnecessary. You know what's the worst part about watching all of this? Mechanically, this killer did really good. Considering that they probably don't have a lot of hours, that they probably play on console, that they are certainly on a controller, they hit some tentacles really, really well. Don't you guys agree? He hit some tentacles that I think, okay, I might have struggled hitting that. No joke. I think he did really good. It's just that you need to use your tentacle less. Plain and simple. When a survivor is injured, especially when you have two perks that work with basic attacks. Yeah. Yeah, it would be so much simpler, man. So much simpler. Let's see. Let's see our friends. So, yeah. These are all control uh, PC players, probably. They send you to Hanonfield, which sucks a little. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Steve. Oh, nasty. <laughs> nasty blood rush, dude. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah.
Now, very winnable, and I'm sure that by now... Okay, we see the prestige of this killer. Uh, Chad, a... This is actually really good. A two... A, a, a 100 level prestige one, or, or, or devotion one, is typically about 200 hours. That means that our killer probably has about 100 hours. And maybe some of that is survivor. If you're playing this good with 100 hours, no joke, that's really impressive. Yeah, that is 100 hours. That's, like, that actually puts all of this into a really, really good context. You're actually pretty insane for 100 hours. Wow. Wow, no joke. No joke. Yeah, very, like, you're uncannily accurate with your whip. And you have a really, like, I would say really good sense of, of how to use it. Uh, like, most of the times you tried it, it made some sense. You know, sometimes I'd be like, ah, nah, don't bother. But, like, you did really good for 100 hours-ish. That's mega impressive. Just, you need to learn to use it less. And when something is, like, when a survivor is cornered into a bad position because you applied the correct pressure and you chase and corral them and they honestly played bad, don't reward them by giving them a speed boost and making them blue. Hit them instead. And that alone will make you win so many more of your games. I also made a video chat that has tips on every single killer. And in that video, I teach you how to use the tentacle, how you can use it through gaps, and when to bother and when not to bother using it. Uh, you might benefit from watching that if you're still trying to get better at Nemesis. Other than that, though, very impressive gameplay for 100 hours. A little bit hard to watch. And I think the survivors that you went against, based on their prestigious, have more, 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 many more hours than you do. So you did pretty good, man. Congratulations. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you enjoy this particular type of content, do let me know so I know if I should make a third episode. And if you want to watch the first one where we watch some really cool uh, viewer games as well, uh, it's now appearing on your screen as a recommended video. Bye-bye. See ya.